So in today's video, we're going to <clears throat> be replacing this part right here. 15, 11, 5606 AC Delco. Uh, convenient, nicely, that it's made in America sticker. But this is basically a fuel pump um, in line. Um, and as you, most of you who have Kodiaks, uh, you know, the majority of diesel powered ones came with um, two fuel tanks. So, let's see. So most of the diesel ones came with two fuel tanks right here. And you're, what you're supposed to do is fill the first one up first, the front one up first, and the second one. Because that pump, the sole purpose of that pump is to pump fuel from the, the rear tank to the front tank. And if it doesn't do it, uh, it can kind of screw up with your gauge. And so I recently ran out of fuel uh, the other day where the front one was bone dry and this one only took a gallon uh, or two gallons. Either way, there was still a lot of fuel left in this one. So I was like, hmm, I either have the pump that's bad or something's going screwy on with the rest of the pump or something with the codes or something else is being screwed up. Because I have heard all you gotta do is clear the codes so it runs, you know, everything's fresh and all of a sudden it works again. Now, I haven't tried that yet, but based on the condition of my pump, I got 360,000 miles on the truck, and based on how old the original one looks up there, I'm like, well, let's just buy it. It's 80 bucks, 85 bucks, and uh, let's put it in. So, it's a three-quarter inch wrench for um, this one right here. Probably best to have some kind of, uh, um, what's it called, sealant on this. And, uh, but th this is a pretty straightforward install. One plug and screw in the lines to the new one. All right, so the first thing we're doing is just disconnecting the wiring. Based on how old these are, it might be better to use like a crow's foot where I get more bite on it. But um, I put, let's get to this. So I cleaned this up real good. Um, and then I had to take off this piece. Okay. So first of all, what you do, um, you slide it back. It goes right here. It slides right in over. Basically, this is to ensure it doesn't back out. And you see how this tab right in the middle, it locks in there. And until you remove this, you, you do not have enough space to push down to release this other one. All right, so let me just do that real quick. I'll, I'll press down and pull out. Okay, so that came out. See on the inside, it's just a, but you gotta have that little piece removed and it just slides right back in the slot when you put it all back together. Definitely clean this out. There's always a chance that this could, mean, could stop working just due to some dust or some grime in here and you know, it not making good connections or something. I don't know how likely that is, but these have been known to go out. So, there we go. I got a wire that's lost some sheathing. I don't know that's part of it. This is this is a West Virginia truck. It's now in Georgia. Overall, there's not a whole lot of rust back here, but there's like a buildup of sand or dirt or something in like layers, as you can see. And uh, but overall, the frame is very clean. There's a lot of that on here on the two connections um so i'm going to have to um clean everything as good as i can just with a pick just to make sure i don't get any slippage on uh my wrenches because the last thing i need is uh to, to have to redo hoses in between tanks so because these are hard lines too. These are these are permanent lines. You definitely don't want to. This side I don't care. I can get scuffed up. This side, the two little ones I need reused in. And today's fluids we're going to be using for this will be from Newco Distributors. We have the New Lube Four Way, which is going to be the penetrating oil, and we have the contact cleaner that I'm going to try to use it to clean up that old. Um, the original plug for the, uh, the the fuel pump and then i gotta spray it down with this for a bit and 
I hope I don't break any of those uh, those factory uh, metal fuel lines. So I tried doing it with just some wrenches, and I was like, oh, let's let, let's get some of this on there and uh, see if we can't improve things a little bit because uh, it was. I don't. I think it's rusted stuck. So we're gonna try to unrust it. All right. This is the setup I used to break the first side free. It's a crow's foot, three quarter inch. If I cleaned up the dirt and whatnot enough that I could get the three quarter inch on, and then I used a five ace, uh, I think it's called it flare wrench on the other side. But this is what I did, and it worked. Okay, so I just got the new one in. Uh, just make sure you got the arrow pointing forward. I did not need to un clip this clip I just undid both and slid this back and this is flexible just enough to, to get out the way this is super flexible there must be a rubber hose back here or something rubber portion of it this side is going to have uh, fluid from the tank which makes me also think that this other pump was just shot because it clearly there's gas or diesel coming right here so basically just get them back in clean off the uh, clean off your seals if you're know if you've got them on hand replace them but if not at least make sure they're clean and then uh just snug everything back down okay the hard work is done here um as you can see we've got um everything i've got it snug um as as it was when it came off um the clamp like i said i never had to take that off it's already slide it in it's mostly just to hold the weight not really the lines itself hold it from going back and forth so really all i have to do right here is um plug in these connectors and then you know use some uh we use some of that new solve contact cleaner we sprayed it very liberally in there and uh we're gonna trust that it looks clean enough to me um and then i gotta go get a zip tie and we'll see how there's some exposed wire here I do think it'll get, I don't have any loom on me but if I had some loom I'd use some loom um, because this sags a good bit so we're gonna get a zip tie and kind of tie it up to the pump itself just to keep them away from uh, touching metal so there's no problems with that we just don't want it to get there to be any random shorts which it doesn't look like there's any yet so that's good but uh, this is snug. I need to wipe it down. I will get a rag before I leave from here. That way, if I know if it looks wet in the future, I got to take it apart because it's still leaking. When you push it in together, just make sure. See, I got a little bit more to go. Got to make sure you get it far enough that tab clicks on. And then you put your little lock in. All right. I got it in. It's locked over the tab. We're going to slide our securement piece in. And that is how it came apart right there. Like I said, I'm about to go get a zip tie. I'm going to tie it up just like that or so. So everything's up a little higher. But yeah, um, that's all there is to it. As long as these come off nicely and, you know, lack of rust. Obviously, if there's a lot of rust. There's a chance that these could be rusted together and you bend the whole line and then you're replacing fuel line but uh, if they come off nicely this really doesn't uh isn't too bad of a job the only part that makes this remotely hard is that i am under the truck leaning up against the rear pumpkin or the rear diff uh as i do this so it's kind of a weird position but um thankfully that the the bolts aren't too torqued to really need a whole lot of force to break them loose and to put it back together so I'm hoping right now that I'll have a more accurate fuel gauge and I'll be able to get fuel from this back tank. There it is, the finished product. Just a basic zip tie, just to keep everything from flopping around. Um, it is plastic touching the pump. I'm not too worried about it being plastic. I'm not gonna bother trimming this because nobody sees it. And uh, that's all she wrote right there. Thanks for watching.